Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kendra with Burgos Alchemy. I'm finally getting back to the more creative side of things, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I had, a, I had to get some things off of my chest there for a little while. Um, but now that I have got my own store uh, finally launched, and you can uh, visit that at uh, uh, burgosalchemy.com, I'm feeling a lot more confident and a lot better. I still have my Etsy shop, but I'm going to go ahead and maintain my Etsy shop um, my international customers uh, are going to have to use Etsy for a little while longer until I can get uh, set up for international sales on my new store. Um, and then also, too, I don't really see the harm of having both an Etsy shop and a regular store, especially, you know, when you first open up a second store uh, for marketing purposes. And just, you know, I, I just didn't like not having a plan B or just having all my eggs in one basket. Like I had mentioned before, I just think it's a good idea to have, um, you know, another place to do business. So I'm super, super excited and happy about that. Um, and I love my new website. I'm in love with it. So <laughs> um, I hope you guys like it too. Uh, let me know what you think in the description box below, or if you have any questions, let me know. But onward and forward and onward, yes, progress is definitely um, the name of the game right now. So I promised you guys that I was going to do a video about um, Blythe doll eye making. So, um, but there's a lot of you guys that um, are m maybe like me, uh, where, you know, um, you might just uh, be learning about these or, um, you know, you, there's so many different like branches of like art doll, you know, um, artistry and, and, and even crafting and everything else. Not everybody's going to understand the same things um, that others might. And the, the, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like, I, I came from the Oak art doll uh, community polymer clay sculpture so the um the doll the doll eyes that i started making way back when <laughs> um were, were needed to be super small realistic um for art dolls sculptures so it wasn't until i started getting interested in ball joint dolls um that i then found blythe and i've just had this love affair with blythe now for um it's, it's like this budding romance <laughs> for the past year and a half so I've been and totally in love with making eyes for Blythe. So yeah, that's kind of what I mean by this though. Some of you guys might um, already know a lot of this information, but I, I felt like it was necessary for me to explain some of these things first before I actually get into part two, where I will show you how to actually make a 3D um, style Blythe doll eye. Okay, so Blythe dolls. Um, there are actual, you know, genuine Blythe. Um, me personally, I, I didn't feel right about buying a genuine Blythe and tearing it apart to customize it. Um, in the very beginning, I just felt like that was just sacrilege. So I was like, I'm not doing that to a genuine Blythe. Um, a lot of people will get the factory, um, uh, icy dolls, which are extremely similar to Blythe, but there are some differences to it. But these 14 millimeter eye chips will fit both a genuine Blythe and also icy. There's other, um, you know, sizes too for like middies, petites and all that stuff. Again, I am still learning. Um, there's other dolls like pull-ups and stuff like that. And um, I, again, I'm learning, learning, learning. So um, this is mainly for uh, those of you guys who have the eye mechanisms like this uh, and, you know, need to be able to have certain clearances and stuff like that when you're putting these into these styled dolls so that they can um, get past the eyelid. Uh, when you switch the eye. Okay, so with that being said, <laughs> this is, um, uh, these are actually my most favorite, believe it or not, ways to make Blythe doll eyes. Um, usually I'm the opposite and I like um, sculpting everything um, and hand texturing, but these are super fun because I've been having a blast creating my own unique um, designs. Uh, these are not complete, completed yet. As you can see, there's still paper boarding around the, these. Um, I just have to file this off. This was just a batch that I just made. So um, I use, uh, I don't use glue to uh, to make mine. I, I use uh, UV resin. Um, it, it works really well for me and I don't usually ever have any issues with it. Um, so that's what I like to use. So once I cure it um, really, really well, and I let it sit for a little while, uh, then I cut these out and then I just file away the uh, paper. Um, I do have a video on this, basically not for eyes, but for like making cabochons, like um, these guys here. 
Um, so if you're interested in, in knowing about that, um, because I was using E6000 glue and it really smelled really, really bad. There's a new product out, so if you wanna check that out, you can, but quite honestly, um, I find myself always going back to UV resin. I think it just looks a little bit nicer um, when you're doing these types of things. Okay, so back again to Blythe. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you can use resin stickers or you can use glass uh, to make these little guys. And um, I've tried just doming these with resin and I just didn't like the way that it came out and it's not very uniform. And you really, with these that fit into the iMac, you, you really kind of need to have these pretty, pretty uh, perfectly so that they fit in there just right. And you know, you, you want it to look nice and clean and purposeful um, when you put them in. Now, when you make your own 3D um, style ones, you can see, where these sometimes have a tendency of being a little bit of a higher dome, but not by much. So that is really um, the trick of making the 3D eyes um, is you need to make sure that you have the height proper, proper, you know, a proper height to them. Now, there are some people, and I don't know if this is um, frowned upon or not, I kind of think it's cool, but there's some people that will make their eyes a little bit higher dome. And we all know that a higher dome means more depth to your eye. It just looks kind of cool. So if you go higher than that as a dome, then you'll just have to customize the eyelids on your doll to make them a little bit um, uh, more easier for this to pass, um, you know, when you're when you're switching the eyes. All right, so again, um, this is my favorite method of making these um, dolls' eyes. I, I love this. I'm not a huge fan of the resin stickers, I'll be honest with you. I've tried the resin stickers for making these and I just didn't really care for them a whole lot. Um, I, I prefer glass and uh, you also want to make sure that you use glass that is very low domed. Um, I do have a supplier where I get my glass um, uh, cabochon uh, lenses for these and even though you know the, the glass might be B quality sometimes some, sometimes I'll get some really really good quality where there's no scratches Usually after you apply the UV resin, you're not gonna see hardly anything, even if there are some slight blemishes to the glass. And I also sell these pretty cheaply. Um, I, I think they are anyway. Um, I only sell these for like five, six dollars a pair. So, um, you know, if I wanted to make them more expensive, um, then I, you know, would obviously use a higher quality glass. But quite honestly, I think for the money, um, these these look really nice when they're put into the doll. I really like them a lot. All right, so let's talk about making 3D Blythe eyes. That's why you guys are obviously watching this. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of options when you're when you're making these guys. Okay, you can obviously see like the little UFO shaped little um, thing that's you know attached to this. Um, this little cup can be purchased um, like like this one here. And I will be carrying these. I'm actually waiting for my shipment. So I will be able to offer these to you guys if you're interested in using these. So um, absolutely, um, if, you're, if you're wanting to make a Black Doll Eye, you have to understand that you have to have a hard base, something hard, solid, so that when you put this into your eye mechanism, um, it will hold your design in place and it, you know, it'll do what it's supposed to do. So that's, that's the first thing. You have to have some sort of base here. Now I have seen some folks use polymer clay and they bake the eye and then they dome it. That's obviously perfectly fine. Um, it just, you know, it just depends on what, what you feel comfortable doing. Me personally, I like using either one of these little cups or um, I have a mold that specifically is used to make these little these little cups. I already have one in here, um, and that's what this one looks like. And there's many different versions of these little cups out there, and many different versions of these molds. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm just showing you the basic methods. Um, but then you would basically just create your doll eye inside of this cup, and uh, then dome it and then you're done, okay? And this mold actually even has features, a, I don't know if you can see it, a nice little pupil mold here too to make nice um, pupils for your, um, your eyes as well. It's already like built into the mold. Um, I do like using these um, pre-made cups. They, they tend to be really nice and efficient and fast and you don't have to mess with them too much. But if you go to use these guys, one thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to find a way to anchor these down and get them super flat. 
That is one thing that you have got to do. You want to get them very, very, very flat and even. Make sure that they're nice. You can use a bubble level on here to ensure that that is flat so that when you go to dome it, your lens is not wonky and, you know, falling all over the place. And then also you want it to be kind of firmly on there because you're going to be, you know, moving this around and doing work in there and you don't want this to be moving and shifting on you because once you start working, you don't want to have to destroy your 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 design by trying to push this back down where it belongs. So really make sure that that's really well anchored in there. Um, this is that blue tack that is used for ball joint dolls. It's actually mixed in with another tack that I have right now, but this blue tack, it's uh, the BLU uh, TA, I think it's CK, I think it's spelled that way, but it's BLU. Or no, wait, hold on, is it? Yeah, blue tack. Um, I'm also looking to get some of this um, in my store as well for you guys. Uh, but this stuff is pretty strong. Um, I also have this like little device here. Um, if you guys are interested in, in, in these or something else you see in my videos, let me know. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what you guys um, would like me to carry in my shop for you. But um, these guys here are really cool. You're supposed to, I guess, use it like this and it holds it like the mold does, but I don't like it because for some reason, I just find that it pulls up too much and it just, I don't know, you still have to, if you're gonna do this, you, you still need to put some sort of tacky something down there to hold that in place while you're working. So if you're gonna use something like that, again, make sure it's anchored pretty, pretty good because you don't want that to move around. Me personally, I like doing using these little guys this way because I like having access to the underneath part like this when I'm working because it gives you more of a, a way to I don't know just I, I think it's I think it works a little bit better so um, and you know these guys here the molds you can either make one of the cups and then sculpt in here and make the whole entire eye inside of this um, or you can take the cup out and anchor it somewhere if you're going to be using this though I, I think it's better to just create the eye inside the mold um, because it's just it's going to help you and um, hold it still and everything else so now let's talk about what we can use as a fill and then I'm going to end the video and then make a part two where it's just gonna show you a demonstration of me making the eye. Okay, so the fill, and what I mean by that is the the, 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 in, the detailed um, area in the center, like what are you gonna use for that filling? Really, you guys, you can do a lot of different things. You can use air dry clay, you can use polymer clay, you can use my um, iris fill putty that does not um, harden the stuff here. Um, the reason why I carry this, again, for those of you who might not know, is because I have a, a slight phobia about putting raw polymer clay inside of a hard plastic piece or putting resin over, un, uh, you know, like raw clay, because raw clay tends to have a chemical reaction, um, a, a negative one, <laughs> with other plastics, and it can melt and distort things, so it might look great right there and then, but as time goes on, it could cause a problem. Has it caused a problem? I, I don't know because I, I just know that there's a lot of uh, resin artists out there that make eyes and they use raw polymer clay all the time. So maybe there's not an issue with it, but me personally, it just kind of freaked me out a little bit. So that's why I, I looked for a product like this so that I can create detailed irises. The consistency of it to me is a lot like Cernet. I love Cernet clay and I also like Fimo. But um, again, you can use any kind of polymer clay that you want to, or you can use this stuff here. This is available in my shop on Etsy and on, on uh, virgosalchemy.com right now. Um, I will be carrying certain clays in the future as well. I'm just getting started. So a um, little at a time, right? <laughs> Baby steps. All right. So yeah, um, or you can use polymer clay. Like I was saying, you can use clay. And polymer clay is cool because you can either um, use it, uh, you can use, do like this where you can make like marbled um, pre-colored uh, clays to, to use, 
or you can use a solid white clay and then color it yourself completely using pastels. Guys, I have used so many different things. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So me personally, I use a mixture of all kinds of stuff. I will use alcohol ink. I will use um, liquid pearl. I will use golden high flow color. Um, I will use resin pigments. I will use, like I said, pastels, dyes, inks, uh, micas. There are so many different ways that you can make um, your um, irises or your lenses look beautiful. And um, I said lenses, that was the wrong word. Your iris and your iris area, can't talk today. <laughs> so um, there's so many different options. There's so many different options. Okay, so one of the other things that you need to be also aware of, and the reason I'm going over these things now is because I just wanna make sure that I do, because when I make part two of this video, it is only going to be for, um, it's only gonna show you guys me making the eye because I really can't talk a whole lot when I'm doing, when I'm being creative and making the eyes. For some reason, my left and my right brain will fight one another and I just can't, I, I have a hard time doing it. So this is the explanation part. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna see where I'm gonna be very, very focused on this area right here. This area where the resin and the plastic come together has got to be sealed. The reason not, if it's not, then you're gonna be able to just basically pry off the resin peat part and it'll come right out. And you'll be left with a disgusting mess or if you push down, you'll see clay or whatever you got squeezing out the sides. So this has gotta be completely sealed up, but you have to be very careful because when you put it in the eye mechanism, you, don't, you want it to be able to seat down in there properly. So it has to be seated so that it's, you know, it's not gonna have a problem, you know, being able to be attached inside the, um, the iMac. So just test everything that you do, especially if you're planning on selling yours, just test it and make sure that it actually fits properly in the, in the iMac before you sell them because otherwise you might upset somebody when they go to use them and they can't because they're, they're, they're got a big muffin top on them or something or, you got to keep this this whole this part down here. You got to keep everything nice and clean in here. Make sure there's no resin residue, no clay residue in there. So it's got to be really nice and clean. So, yep, there you go. Eh, this isn't like one of my better eyes that I've made, but it's the only example I have close enough here to show uh, at my desk. Um, so yeah, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. Um, that might not be. 100% clear. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people message me and ask me about, um, you know, attaching the glass to the image and stuff like that. And, you know, for the other style um, eyes and quite honestly, you just, you, you, you just have to be patient um, and check out my other video um, regarding the E6000 versus the E6000 plus. Um, you know, and that will explain to you in detail how I make mine. Um, and I don't, as a rule, I mean, everybody every now and then will have a small bubble trapped in there or some sort of silver spot or something like that. That's just part of it, guys. You know, I mean, it's, you know, these are handmade things. They're not manufactured. Um, and um, I, I actually prefer that. But these are all my um, unique original designs. And um, I think that if you... Um, just take your time and when you're applying the glass on top of the image, don't push too hard. I've seen a lot of people try to push and you're squeezing way too much product out to the side and there's not enough product between the glass and the image to give you guys a good seal. So that's why it's coming apart and you're seeing those little silver spots. Don't push so hard. Just put your glass on top of the image like that and just kind of give it a light little, little squiggle like that and that should be good enough. You don't have to sit there and push down and all that. Now, if you're using E6000 glue, that's a little bit different. That's why I like using the resin because I don't have to go through all of that um, stuff. So anyway, I hope, again, I hope that this was um, helpful to you guys. Uh, check out my store. I, I Now I'm carrying the UV resin um, product that I have been using for years now uh, from Shaw Shaw DIY, UV resin uh, medium and thick. Um, I will also be carrying thin as well, but usually I always use the medium um, and or the thick 
And then guess what? <laughs> I will also be carrying um, Pedico products or Patico products very soon. Um, so I am now an official authorized dealer for uh, Pedico. I arranged that uh, last month. And I'm super excited about being able to offer you guys, finally, my customers. I don't have to keep sending you everywhere else to get your supplies. Although I will tell you if I'm ever out of stock or if you, you know, I will always refer you guys to reputable sellers and Etsy people, um, people that I know that can be trusted to sell you authentic product. There's a lot of issues right now going on with, um, you know, that they'll use the, the same label and everything else like that. And it's not an authentic product. It's some sort of dupe. I just had a friend of mine tell me a horrible story about her getting some Pedico from a seller and it, it gave her chemical burns. My God. So it was not Pedico. <laughs> um, it was some weird bootleg version UV resin. So guys, you got to make sure you know where you're getting your products from. Get them from authorized dealers. Get them from legit sources. Even if you see you know, oh, they've got this great deal on it. Yeah, it's probably because it's not real. Because I'm telling you right now, <laughs> um, th these these products are good quality products. And, you know, they cost money. You know, unfortunately, costs are rising for everybody. And so if you see somebody with a ridiculously low price and they're selling, you know, something like this, you, just be careful. That, that should tingle your spidey senses there and make you wonder what you're actually buying. So just double check your sources of where you're getting your product, please, always, because my God, what a horrible thing to have be, being, you know, trying to be creative and everything and end up having a horrible thing like that happen. It's just terrible. So take care, you guys. I will be doing part two of my Blythe doll eye making video here um, momentarily. I will get this uh, that uploaded and um, I wish you guys a happy week. And uh, thanks for all the subscriptions and the support and the love. You guys are awesome. Take care.